thought back in the day in blocks foot guns used to actually do 40% less damage and you were 60% faster with the butter fruit. These are some of the craziest things that you must know about old blocks foods. Okay, starting off, I'm gonna be telling you about one major difference between the old blocks foods and the new blocks foods. And that's that back in the day in blocks foods, fruits didn't actually used to be called block foods. They used to just kind of be normal circular fruits. They were not blocks shape at all. You can see by the fruits on screen right now that they were completely different. They were circular and the spring food actually kind of looked like a spring food. But anyways, the reason that this was actually changed in the game was because of copyright and blocks foods did not want to get copyrighted by one piece. So they changed the branding for the fruits to be blocks instead of normal circles. But it's still something that's pretty cool to know about the olden days of blocks fruits versus now. Okay, so now I'm going to be telling you about something that you knew blocks fruits players definitely did not know about. And I'm talking about the poneglyphs. And if you watch one piece, you might already know what these are and what they look like. But let me tell you anyways. Back in the day in update 10, the poneglyphs are large stones with a bunch of carved letters slash symbols on them. And they were added to the game somewhere around update 10 to update 12. And this is what they looked like. They were just big cube shaped rocks. And they were actually removed from the game on update 13. And to this day, no one knows why they were added or why they were removed. You can find the poneglyph located at the snow mountain and at the cave island in the second sea. And like I mentioned before, nothing much is known about these structures, but rumors spread that it was actually a hint about the awakening for the rubber fruit. But we literally never got that to this day. And if you actually look closely at the poneglyphs, there was actually the gamer robot symbol carved on them, which is a pretty cool easter egg. But overall, it's just a pretty cool secret and I'm not sure why they removed this from the game. Okay, so now I'm gonna be telling you about a pretty old glitch that used to be in the game and this was really overpowered if you knew how to use it properly. And what this glitch basically allowed you to do was use two fruits at the same time. And the way you did this is by using a fruit that has a transformation and then sitting down on a chair. Usually people use a leopard fruit for this because it's the best transformed fruit in the game. Once you did that and activated your transformation, all you have to do is go over to the normal blocks fruit dealer and talk to him and get a different fruit and then you can just activate that fruit while you have the leopard transformation. And that basically gives you the speed of the leopard and the extra help and you get a whole extra fruit with it. Damn, that is really, really overpowered and they see why they removed this from the game. You would literally be unbeatable if you had two fruits. Alright, now we got another pretty major change and this is the old start menu versus the new start menu in Blocks Fruits. And if you take a look on your screen, you'll see that the old start menu here has a few minor differences. The outlines of the Marines versus Pirate side is a little bit thicker in the new version and in the old version, you see the Pirate side is actually a completely different person. And if you guys know who this is, props to you. This is Buggy the Clown. And guess what? They removed this change also because of copyright because this is a character in the one piece anime and they did not want to copy any more from there than they already have in the game damn i wonder how blocks fruits would be if a lot of things weren't taken down for copyright okay so next up i got a pretty minor change and this is something that's actually pretty noticeable and that is the actual name of the game did you know back in the day block fruits actually used to be called blocks piece huh? and you might be wondering why the name was actually changed and well you guessed it copyright just like most of the other changes on this list and the reason for the copyright is pretty obvious having the name as blocks piece is way too similar to the One Piece anime, so they had to change it to Blocks Fruits because the game revolves around fruits anyway, so it's good for their branding. But anyways, I think this wasn't that big of a deal because Blocks Fruits is still the same game we all love. Next up, we got another secret NPC that used to be in the game, and I'm talking about Santa Claus himself. And Santa Claus was obviously added during each Christmas event that the game went through. He's an NPC that sells you limited time accessories as well as a secret boat called the Sleigh, and a lot of people don't have this. He was first added in Update 13, which was the first Christmas event in the game. Then he was removed in the very next update. Update. And he was re-added in update 17, which was the next Christmas event. And some of you might be wondering, what did he actually sell you? Well, during the Christmas event, when you killed NPCs, you actually used to get a thing called candies, which was basically the currency that you bought stuff from Santa Claus with. And the first thing that you could buy was called the elf hat, and this is a pretty solid accessory overall. Well, it's more for show than use. And the second one was called the Santa's hat, which was basically the exact same thing. Then we got the sleigh, which was the secret boat that you could buy for a total of 1,000 candies. And let me tell you, these candies were not easy to get. Overall, a pretty cool event, and I'm looking forward to seeing Santa Santa Claus again this Christmas. Alright, next up we got another minor change, and this one is actually pretty small compared to all the other changes, and it's actually the fruit category names. Everyone knows the three different categories for fruits in Blocks Fruits. We got the Elemental, we got the Natural, and we got the Beast. The Beast fruits are obviously the ones that have transformations, the Elemental ones are pretty self-explanatory, I mean they're Elementals, and Natural fruits are ones that don't fit into the Beast or Elemental category. They're kind of just a separate group on their own. But did you know when Blocks Fruits first started, they actually did not have these names. They used to be called something else. The Natural fruits used to be called Paramecia, the elemental fruits used to be called Logia, and the beast fruits used to be called Zone. And once again, you guessed it, the reason they were called this is because they were trying to replicate the same categories as the One Piece anime, and they were changed obviously due to copyright. But let me know what you guys think in the comments, do you prefer the old category names or the new ones? Me personally, I like the old ones, because it feels way more natural. Alright, next up we got another pretty minor change in the game. And that was back in the day in Blocks Fruits, the max server size used to be only 10, so there could only be a total of 10 people in each server, compared to the 12 that we have now, 
which isn't that big of a difference, but when you look at back in the day where the islands and block splits were nowhere close to the amount as they are now, you'll understand why it was just 10 players, because it would just be chaos if there was a lot more. But I still think 12 is a lot better, and honestly, currently, I wouldn't mind if they changed it to like 20 or something, because I just think there need to be more players on the map, especially in the second and third seas. They're way too big for just 12 players. Okay, now we got something that's actually really different to the current day in block splits, and that is the max level in the game. Back in the day in block splits, the max level that you could be was actually not 2450. It was actually just level 300. Can you imagine that? You just finished the game after level 300. And the last island of the game was the Colosseum. So once you were done with all the quests there, you were literally done with the whole game and you could just alt F4 out and you were completed with it. There was literally no second C, there was no third C, it was just the first C all the way up to the Colosseum. Next up, we got another pretty minor difference and that's back in the day, there actually wasn't as many game passes as there are today. And one of those game passes was the Fruit Notifier. And all of you players that spend Robux on the game, you should know how useful of a game pass this is. This literally almost guarantees that you get the fruit that spawns in. Huh? And when this game pass didn't exist, each player would have to manually track down the fruit that spawned in. Well, I guess that's how the game is like for players that don't spend Robux on it. But since I have the fruit notifier, it would be a pretty big difference for me. But then again, I have almost all the good fruits in the game, so it doesn't really matter. Next up, we got another major thing, and this is especially for you people out there that are gun mains. Did you guys know that the gun's passive attack actually used to do 40% less damage of what it does now? And that is a major difference, because think of how you useless guns are now. Imagine how useless they would have been back then. And another thing to go with that is that guns actually had no skills, you just had the passive ability, and even that was nerfed by 40%. And let's be honest, there's literally no point in using guns if they don't have skills. You would have to be one hell of a dedicated gun main to still use them with that. But anyways, no one really uses guns, so let's head over to the next one. Okay, so next up we got another pretty major change with one of the most crucial abilities in the whole game, and I'm talking about the sky jump ability. Everybody knows and loves this ability, and everyone also knows that you get a total of around 10 jumps and it slightly varies depending on whether you have the angel race or not i think you get like two extra jumps if you have the angel but anyways but back in the day when the sky jump ability was first added to the game you actually did not have any limit on how many jumps you had which means as long as you had enough energy to do the jumps you could keep doing them and there was basically infinite sky jumps to people that had a lot of energy and that was really overpowered because you could literally jump from the sea floor all the way up into the sky and that's actually kind of crazy because if you think about it if you stand underneath skylands you could actually jump all the way up there well it might be a bit faster to actually walk up the slope, but it's still pretty cool that you can have infinite jumps. But I completely understand why they removed this from the game. It was a little bit too overpowered. Okay, so next up, we got an old thing about the Buddha fruit. It's literally the best grinding fruit in the whole game. And if you want to get to max level, this is the fruit you ideally want to be using. But did you know that back in the day, it actually used to be way more overpowered? And there was a little speed hack you could do with this fruit. So currently in the modern blocks fruits, when you use the transformation for the Buddha, your speed only increases by 15%. But you actually look like you're walking a lot slower because of just how huge you are. Cover a lot more ground when you're bigger. But did you know that back in the day in Blocks Roots, the Buddha actually used to give you a 60% speed boost. So you literally used to become the Flash when you transformed with the Buddha. This lets you walk around at high speeds and when you're fighting people or enemies, they will 100% guaranteed not be able to land a hit on you just because of how fast you are. But overall, I kind of see why the devs averted this change because the Buddha fruit is already so overpowered even without that speed boost. And I think the Buddha fruit is at a good point in the game right now, so there's no need to change it. Okay, so everybody knows that currently in Blast Roots, you have to reach level 15 before you can start fighting against other players. Some of you might have forgotten about this, but it's a pretty crucial thing to the game and the devs added this so that new players don't quit just because they get killed by players that are max level. But back in the day in Blast Roots, there was no prevention against this, so if you were just a new player that spawned into the game and if you're in a place where PvP was turned on, then you would just die. Every single player that was a higher level than you would just target you because you're such a low level and so easy to kill. So the game would actually just kind of be ruined for you because everywhere you go, people will just be killing you just because of how low your level is. Overall, I'm pretty glad they changed this because I know that I would have a bad first impression on a game if the first thing that happened to me when I entered it was me just dying over and over again. Overall, a really solid change. Okay, so everybody knows about the different events that are currently in Blast Roots. We got the Sea Beast, which a singular Sea Beast spawns in and attacks you and your ship. We got Rumbling Waters, where three Sea Beasts spawn in, attack you and your ship. Then we got the Mirage Island event, and we got the Raid. The Raid is where a bunch of ships attack you, and the Mirage Island is where a magical island just spawns in with a bunch of secret stuff on it. But back in the day in Blocks Roots, none of these existed. There were literally no sea events in the game, which means there were no sea beasts, no ship raids, no rumbling waters, and no Mirage Island. Damn, that would have been pretty boring, but I'm glad they have these now. Makes the game a lot more interesting. Okay, so everybody knows and loves fragments in Blocks Roots, but did you know that back in the day in the old Blocks Roots, the fragments were actually called something else. They were called rare artifacts. And the rare artifacts was an item that was dropped by the Darkbeard raid boss with a 100% chance. And they could be used to unlock certain items or services, but it was removed after update 11 and replaced with fragments.
And in my opinion, fragments are just a lot more cleaner and they're the currency that we all know and love. And plus with these rare artifacts, once you left the game, you actually wouldn't get them back. So you actually had nowhere to save these. And if you wanted to save up for something like a fighting style, you would just have to stay in game and grind the boss a bunch of times. It's just a pretty tedious task. And overall, I'm pretty happy that they changed this. Okay, so now I'm going to be telling you guys about a secret fruit that was actually removed from the game. Well, not really huh? removed, but updated. And I'm obviously talking about the door fruit. And this is what it looks like. This fruit costs a total of 950,000 belly or 1,400 robux from the blast fruit dealer. It was a rare fruit and a natural type fruit. And all of the abilities of this fruit are very similar to the portal fruit. And the reason for that is the portal fruit is the updated version of the door fruit. And let me tell you the reason why it was changed. Well, I'm sure you all guessed it by now. It's copyright. Damn, copyright really ruined a lot of things in this game. In my opinion, I still think the door fruit is pretty cool, but I'm not really sure which one I like more. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Okay, so the very first title we got here is called Berserker. And this one you get once you unlock Human V4. And similar to that, we got Thunderbolt. And for this one, you have to unlock Rabbit V4. Next up is Leviathan. And for this one, you guessed it, you have to unlock Shark V4. Then we got His Majesty. And for this one, you have to unlock Angel V4. Then we got Nightwalker. And for this one, you gotta unlock Ghoul V4. And for the last race, Cyborg, once you unlock the V4 version, you get the Genesis title. Next up, we got Bounty Hunter. And for this one, you have to get a 5 million or higher bounty or honor. And then you also get Pirate Hunter with the exact same requirements. Next up, we got Warlord of the Sea. And for this one, you need a 10 million plus bounty. Bounty. Then we got Emperor of the Sea and for this one you gotta have a 20 million plus bounty. And you obviously also get Empress of the Sea along with that. Next up we got Admiral and for this one you have to get 100 million honor. And similar to that next up we got Fleet Admiral and for this one you need 20 million plus honor. Next we got the Enlightened one. This one you get as soon as you awaken any race. By that I mean getting the race to its V4 version. You also get Awakened one along with Over Heaven and Over Hell. All for the same thing. What I mean by that is when you awaken a fruit you get this title. Next we got Flame Fist and this one you get for the Flame Awakened. Then we got the Ice Queen and the Ice King, which you get for obviously the Ice Awakening. Next, we got the strongest one, and this one is for the Quake Awakening. And next up for the Light Awakening, we got the First Light. Then for the Dark Awakening, we got Dark Lord, and the Spider for the Spider Awakening, Thunder God for the Rumble Awakening, the Red Dog for the Magma Awakening, Colossal God for the Buddha Awakening, Desert Prince for the Sand Awakening, and for the Phoenix Awakening, we got the Phoenix. Next, we got Bread Chaser for the Doe Awakening, which is pretty funny in my opinion. Next up, we got Innovator, and for this one, you had to vote for the Roblox Innovation Awards during 2020. 23. Next, we got Vedlock Toad, and for this one, you have to complete the April Fool's 2023 event, and you can obviously no longer get this. Next, we got Plugger Destroyer of Worlds, and for this one, you also had to complete the April Fool's 2023 event, which is obviously still not available. Next up, we got a title that you can claim with a Twitter code, or I should say an X code, because Twitter got renamed, and this one is called Big News. Next, we got the YouTuber title, and for this one, you have to be a Blast Fruits YouTuber with a good standing in the community, and I still don't have a YouTuber title. Next, we got the Ace Squad, and for this one, you gotta defeat the YouTuber, the Great Ace. Then we got Officially a Noob, and for this one, you obviously gotta defeat Official Newbie. Then we got Water Gang, and for this one, you have to defeat Digrock. Next, we got Don Axoria Familia, and for this one, you gotta defeat the YouTuber, Axori. Sorry if I'm pronouncing these wrong, by the way. Next, we got Mafia Gang, and for this one, you have to defeat Bloxy Gaming. Then we got Herora Family, and for this one, you have to defeat the YouTuber, Herora. Next, we got Magic Slayer, and for this one, you gotta obviously defeat Magic Buzz. Then we got Kit Kat, and for this one, you gotta defeat Kit Gaming. Then we got Team JC, and for this one, you gotta defeat the YouTuber JCWK. Next up, we got El Combo God, and for this one, you have to defeat Fur999. Next up, we got Nakama Forever, and for this one, you gotta defeat me and you. Next up, we got Endless Fantasy, and for this one, you gotta defeat Rigel underscore N. Then we got El Crazy Editor, and you gotta defeat the content editor Zeolus. Next, we got Rip Family, and for this one, all you gotta do is join the Rip Family group and receive a higher role in that group. Then we got Lead Region for the exact same thing, but this time you gotta join a different group called the Red Legion. Next, we got Justice Seeker, and for this one, you just have to claim your first bounty as a Marine. Next, we got Empty Vessel, and for this one, you just have to use up all your energy, which might be kind of difficult for higher level players, because they literally have like 4,000 plus energy. Next, we got the Unlucky, and for this one, you just have to die to a regular enemy. Then we got the Vanquished, and for this one, you gotta die to a boss. Then we got Fallen Hero, and for this one, you gotta die to a raid boss. Next up, we got Iron Man, and for this one, you have to reach Max Hockey. Then we got Ultra Instinct, and for this one, you gotta reach Max Observation. Next, we got Mad Scientist, and for this one, you just gotta buy a regular microchip from the scientist. Then we got the Professor, and for this one, you gotta buy a special microchip. Next, we got the Shadow, and for this one, all you have to do is stay in a server for more than an hour. Which is kind of difficult if you got a low attention spam, like me. Next, we got the Vampire, and for this one, you gotta stay in a server for 4 hours. Then we got Dracula, and for this one, you have to stay in a server for around 12 hours. Damn, that's a lot of time. Next, we got the Grandfather, and for this one, you have to trade fragments for a race reroll. Next, we got Jack of All Trades, and for this one, you gotta trade in fragments for a stat refund. Then we got the Undefeated one, and for this one, you have to receive damage from a player and survive with less than 50 HP left. Next, we got Immortal Being, and for this one, you have 
to receive damage from a player and survive with one HP left. And I don't think a lot of you have this because this is extremely difficult to do, even if you have a friend helping you. Next, we got the Mad King, and for this one, you gotta play a chess match in Block Fruits and use the Castle function. Next, we got the Mastermind, and for this one, you have to defeat an opponent in a chess game. Next up, we got the Dog, and for this one, all you gotta do is talk to the Doghouse. Next, we have Ship Destroyer, and for this one, you gotta destroy a ship with a cannon, which is something that I surprisingly have not done yet. Next, we got the Explorer, and for this one, you have to reach level 800. Next up, we got the Adventurer, and for this one, you gotta reach level 1000. Next, Mercenary, and for this one, you have to reach level 1200. Viking for level 1600, the Pioneer for level 2000, and the Glorious for level 2400. Next, we got the Master, and for this one, you have to reach max mastery on any weapon, sword, gun, or fighting style. Then we got Unbreakable Will for the exact same thing. Next up, we got Fist of Death, and for this one, you gotta reach max mastery on a fighting style. Then we got God's Blade for reaching max mastery on a sword. Then we got King's Sniper for reaching max mastery on a gun. Lastly, for the masteries, we got Beyond the Sea for max mastery on a fruit. I recommend using the door or the leopard fruit. It's pretty easy to fight people with that. Next up, we got Broken Heart, and for this one, you gotta run out of time during a raid, which is pretty easy to do if you're bad at the game. Next, we got the Conqueror, and for this one, you gotta complete a raid. Next up, we got Last Hope, and for this one, you have to be the last person standing and win a raid. So you just have to clutch up for your friends, basically. Next up, we got the Supersonic, and for this one, you have to complete a raid in less than 5 minutes. Next, we got the Flash, and for this one, you have to complete a raid in less than 3 minutes, 30 seconds. Next, we got the Champion, and for this one, you have to complete Bartillo's mission, which is required if you want to head over to the third seat. Next, we got Tide Warrior, and for this one, you have to die to water, which is pretty easy to do, and I'm sure you all can figure out how to do that. Next, we got the Toxic, and for this one, you gotta win a fruit from the factory event on the second seat. Next, we got Blessed One, and for this one, you just have to simply find a fruit, which might be kind of hard to do if you don't have the blocks with Notifier Game Pass. Next, we got Equal to the Heavens, and for this one, you have to defeat a blocks with staff member, and this one is pretty difficult to do because I don't think you're running into a staff member in your game anytime soon. Next up, we got the Rich, and for this one, you have to obtain cash of 5 million or higher. Next up, we got Unlimited Money, and for this one, you have to get at least 20 million belly. Next, we got Riches in the World, and for this one, you gotta get 50 million belly. Damn, that's a lot of money. Next up, we got the Unleashed, and for this one, you gotta unlock human v2 then we got unmatched speed and for this one you gotta unlock rabbit v2 next up is sea monster and for this one you gotta unlock shark v2 next we got sacred warrior and for this one you gotta unlock angel v2 then we got the ghoul which you obviously have to unlock ghoul v2 for then we got the cyborg and this one is also pretty self-explanatory you gotta get cyborg v2 next up we got full power and for this one you have to unlock human v3 then we got godspeed and for this one you need to unlock rabbit v3 next up we got warrior of the sea and for this one you have to unlock shark v3 then we got perfect being and for this one you gotta unlock angel v3 then we got Hellhound for Ghoul V3 and War Machine for Cyborg V3. Next, we got the Collector, and for this one, you have to buy something from the Legendary Sword Dealer or the Master of Auras. And those NPCs are pretty difficult to buy something from. Next, we got the Swordsman, and for this one, you gotta obtain a sword from the Legendary Sword Dealer. Next up, we got Beast Hunter, and for this one, you gotta defeat a Sea Beast. And if you're trying to get this title, I recommend the Shark V4 race along with the Awakened Magma Fruit. Next up, we got the Beast, and for this one, you gotta defeat 25 Sea Beasts. Then we got the Lost Soul, and for this one, you gotta die to Factory Poison. Next, we got Forbidden One, and for this one, you have to find the Fist of Darkness in a chest. Next up is the Troll, and for this one, you have to die with the fruit in your inventory. Then we got Hidden Power, and for this one, you gotta eat a physical fruit. Next, we have Heavenly Devil, and for this one, you gotta defeat the Dawn Swan boss once. Next, we got the Cursed One, and for this one, you gotta defeat the Darkbeard boss. Next is Beyond Death, and this one is for the Order boss. Then we got Knight's Edge, and this is for the Cursed Captain. Then we got Kindhearted, and for this one, you gotta drop a fruit. But I'm not sure why they're giving you the Kindhearted title, because you can literally just drop a fruit and pick it up again. Next, we got the Kraken, and for this one, you gotta drop a fruit into the sea. And if you want this title, I recommend dropping a useless fruit, like Tequilo. Next, we got Lavish Living, and for this one, you gotta buy any fruit from the Blocks Fruit Dealer. Next, we got Night Owl, and for this one, you gotta buy a fruit worth 1 million plus from the Blocks Fruit Dealer. Next, we got Wicked Captain, and for this one, you gotta get the Dark Coat, which you get from defeating the Darkbeard boss. Next, we got Dragonborn, and for this one, you gotta unlock Dragon's Breath. Next, we got Burning Leg, and this one is obviously for Death Step. Next up is Shark Man, and this one is for Shark Man Karate. Then we got the Samurai title for people that unlock the Ren Goku Sword. Next, we got the Silent, and this is if you die to a player that's below level 800. Next is the Executioner if you die to a max level player. And to get the title, you also gotta be max level when you die to them. Next, we got the Stalker, and for this one, you gotta defeat a player that's the same level as yours. Next, we got Risk Taker, and for this one, you gotta buy a fruit from the Blocks Fruit Dealer's cousin. Next is Luck of Draw. For this one, you have to get a fruit that's worth more than 1 million from the blocks with Gacha. Next, we got Unstoppable Force, and for this one, you gotta defeat 5 players, and each kill has to take Bounty or Honor, so you can't defeat someone that you already killed 3 times. Keep in mind, you also have to do all of this without dying in the same server. Next, we got Raging Demon, which is the same thing as before, but this time, you gotta kill 20 people without dying in the same server. Damn, that's gonna be pretty difficult to do. Next, we got the Protagonist, and for this one, you gotta defeat 2 or more players at the same time. Then we got Cold-Blooded, and for this one, you have to defeat 10 players in the same server. Then we got Apex Predator, and for this 
this one, you gotta defeat 25 players in the same server. Next, we got the killer for unlocking superhuman. And you also get the human weapon for this. And when you unlock the true triple katana, you get the demon eye title along with the hurricane. Next, you get the enhancer if you unlock any aura color. And you get true heart if you unlock the snow white color. And if you unlock the pure red color, you get bringer of doom. If you unlock the winter sky color, then you get realm creator. And if you unlock every single purchasable aura hockey color in the game, then you get hakai shin. Next up, we got slayer of god. And for this one, you have to unlock the graveyard secret, which is a dark blade slayer skin. Next up, we got the ghost, and for this one, you gotta collect 100 ectoplasm. Next, we got ruler of the night, and for this one, you gotta collect 250 ectoplasm. Then we got lonely reaper, and for this one, you gotta collect 1,000 ectoplasm. Next up, we got the most wanted, and for this one, you gotta own a crew that's currently in the top 100 of the leaderboard, which is very, very difficult to do. But that's nothing compared to the next one. This next one is called Pirate King, and you have to own a crew that is in the top 10 leaderboard of the game. And this is probably by far the hardest title to get on this list. Next, we got Sugar Rush, and for this one, you gotta collect 100 candies. And candies are obviously something you can collect during the Christmas event. Next up, we got Christmas Spirit for 250 candies, then we got Loco Verde for 1,000 candies. Next up, we get the Raid Boss title if you get a fruit from the Pirate Raid event. Next up, we got the Real Deal, and for this one, you gotta defeat an elite enemy. Next, we have Demon Mode, and for this one, you gotta unlock the Yama Sword. After that, we got Celestia. Swordsman, and for this one, you gotta unlock Tushida. When you unlock Electric Claw, you get the Ration title. Next, we got Shadow Sovereign here, and for this one, you gotta defeat Rip Indra in his true form. Next, we got the Chosen One, and for this one, you gotta find the God's Chalice in a chest. Next is Main Characters, and you get this by completing the Citizen's Mission. Next up is Final Hero, and for this one, you have to unlock the Rainbow Savior Hockey Color. Next, we got Skeleton, and for this one, you have to simply collect 250 bones. And you can get those on, on the Haunted Castle in the Third Sea by killing Skeleton. Then we got Undead Lord, which you can get by collecting 500 bones. Next, we got Death King, which you can get by collecting 2,000 bones. And this title and the previous one are actually unobtainable after update 15, so if you have this, then you can consider yourself special. Next, we got Shinigami, and for this one, you gotta defeat the Soul Reaper once. Then we got Devil's Luck, and for this one, you gotta get the Halo Essence or the God's Chalice from Praying. Next up are two pretty difficult titles to get. First up, we got Doe Commander, and for this one, you gotta defeat the Cake Prince. Next up is Doe King, and you get this by defeating, obviously, the Doe King. Now let's talk about some titles that you cannot get if you're normal block switch player. First up we got Rip Family Leader and for this one you gotta be Rip Indra. Next up is Dragon of Dodgma and for this one you have to be Tora Toys, also known as Kiru Kazuma. Next we got Dragon Taro Torane. And for this one, you gotta be Uzon. Next up, we got the James Charles title. And for this one, you gotta be Rip Anderson. Next, we got the Lost Crazy Real Official. And for this one, you have to be Guashim. Next, we got El Poppy. And for this one, you have to be Uzi underscore London. Next up, we got Buzz of God. And for this one, you gotta be Broad. Lost Original Beast Supreme Loco Verde. And for this one, you gotta be Drip Mama. Next up, we got Stables Persendo. Why are so many of these Spanish, man? My Spanish is terrible. And for this one, you gotta be Aerie. Next up, we got Loco Verde. And for this one, you gotta be Rip Indra. Next up is Festive Jester. And for this one, you gotta be Experiment. Next, we got El Rod official and for this one you got to be a blocks fruits admin next up is the owner and the blocks fruits official title and, and for this one you got to be a co-owner of blocks fruits now let's talk about some title colors first up we got the default title then we got the white title which you can unlock automatically and you can equip these at any time next up we got spanish pink which you can get after you get 10 titles then we got deep peach after 20 titles blonde after 30 titles once you get 40 titles you get kalmasi once you get 50 titles you get nyans then we got pistachio after 60 titles tea green after 70 titles diamond after 80 titles and after 90 titles, you get Powder Blue. And after 100 titles, you get Pale Lavender. But wait, there's more. After 120 titles, you get Shampoo. You get the Classic Rose after you reach 140 titles. And finally, you get Aquamarine if you reach 160 titles. Alright, starting off, I'm going to be telling you guys about the new fruits that were added in this update. First up, we got the Mammoth Fruit. And next up is the Sound Fruit along with the Rocket Fruit. Well, the Rocket Fruit kind of just replaced the Kilo Fruit because of copyright. Anyway, starting off with the Mammoth Fruit. This is a mythical fruit that costs a total of 2,700,000 belly or 2,300 Robux from the Blocks Fruit dealer. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, just lets you transform into a Mammoth. First ability we got here is the Z ability with a one master requirement. And this one is called Ancient Cutter. For this one, you just shoot three sword-like strikes towards your enemy or wherever your cursor is aiming and they deal a decent amount of damage and knockback. Next up is the X ability and it's called True Prehistoric Pun with a 50 mass requirement. For this one, you dash towards your enemy, slam them into the floor and send them flying into the sky. Next up is the C ability called Colossal Crusher with a 100 mass requirement and this one does the exact same thing but does a little bit more damage. Next up is the Transformation which requires 300 mastery and for this one, you basically just transform into a mammoth. The abilities from before aren't actually a mammoth, it's kind of just like a phantom mammoth that only shows up during the ability. But when you transform 
transform, you actually fully transform into one, and your abilities get a lot more powerful. Next up is the Stampede ability, and this is the movement ability. And the cool thing about this ability is that when you use it while transformed, its duration is actually unlimited, so you can keep going for as long as you want. And similar to the Awakened Buddha's passive ability, this ability constantly does damage as long as you're hitting your target. Overall, a really solid fruit, and since it's mythical, you already know it's good. Next fruit is the Sound Fruit, and I'm sure a lot of you have already seen this. It's a legendary fruit, and it costs a total of 1,700,000 belly, or 1,900 Robux from the Blast Fruit dealer. The first ability of this fruit is the Z ability, and it's called Notes, with a 1 master requirement. For this one, you can basically charge it up, and you just shoot out a bunch of notes in the direction you aim. Very solid ability. Next ability is the X ability, with a 50 master requirement. And for this one, you basically just shoot a wave of sound towards wherever your cursor is aiming. A very solid ability, and it deals a decent amount of AoE damage. Next up is Symphonic Radiance, the C ability with a 100 master requirement. For this one, you spawn a disco ball into the sky, and it just aimbots onto your target. Well, not really aimbot because it shoots all over the place, but you're guaranteed damage. And this, I would say, is better when you're fighting more people at the same time or for grinding. Next ability is called Glorious Harmony. And for this one, you basically just gather a bunch of balls around you, and you can shoot them towards wherever you want. And once you shoot all of them, it basically just plays a huge music note, and it actually shakes your screen and changes color. And this is probably one of the coolest looking abilities in the game. Next up is the F ability, and this is the movement ability of the fruit, with 175 master requirement. And this one is very similar to the flame fruits abilities, but instead of a flame trail, you actually leave behind a sound trail. Overall, a very solid fruit, but I wouldn't really say it's a really high class fruit. It's a very solid one indeed. Next up, we got the rocket fruit, and since this is replacing the kilo fruit, its stats are basically the same. It costs a total of 5,000 belly or 50 robux from the blocks fruit dealer. And the first ability is called missile fist, with a one master requirement. For this one, very self-explanatory, you just shoot a missile towards wherever you're aiming. Next up, we got the air strike ability, and for this one, wherever your cursor is, you basically just summon a bunch of missiles, and they do a decent amount of damage. Next up, we got the Rocket Crash ability, and for this one, you jump up into the sky, then you slam back down into the floor. Also, a pretty decent ability. Next up is the Movement ability, the final ability for this fruit, with a 75 master requirement. And this one is called Blast Off, and this is very similar to the Flame Fruit's Movement ability. You just jump, and you kind of just fly around. Obviously, I would say this is probably the worst fruit in the game, but for its price, it's very solid. And that's it for the new fruits that were added. But did you know that there's actually a new fighting style that was added called Sanguine Art? And this fighting style is actually a blood-based fighting style, which you can learn from an NPC called Safi in the third C. This fighting style costs a total of 5 million belly along with 5,000 fragments. And the requirements for this are that you have to own an item called the Leviathan's Heart which you can get from the Leviathan C event which is a new thing that was added as well. And the way you get it is by using a harpoon from the Beast Hunter ship. Also a new ship. We will get into both of those later. Once you do that, all you gotta do is head over to the basement of the Tiki outpost inside of the main castle. Then you gotta talk to the NPC called Shafi and then you can learn it from there for the total cost of a Leviathan's Heart, 20 Demonic Wisps, 20 Vampire Fangs and 2 Dark Fragments. Very first ability of this fighting style is the right click ability. Yup, that's something new with the fighting style. We've never seen this before. This one, you basically just spawn in a bunch of bats around you and you can just shoot them to wherever you are. But since this is just a right click ability, it's not insane. It's just pretty decent. Next, we got Bloodbane Drain with 125 master requirement. With this one, you basically just dash towards your enemy and you just hit them repeatedly a bunch of times and it deals a decent amount of damage. Next up is the Scarlet Tear ability with a 250 master requirement. For this one, you basically just shoot a bunch of claw marks towards your enemy. Next up, we got Devourer of Worlds and this ability actually has two different variations, just like some other fighting styles in the game. The first variation is actually pretty similar to one of the Doe Fruits abilities. You basically hit your opponent with something and then you just send them into a trail of hits, dealing a butt ton of damage to them. And the second variation of this ability is you shooting a ball into the sky and it basically just aimbots whoever you're standing next to and deals a decent amount of damage. Overall, this fighting style is very solid, but I'm not sure if it's better than God Human. I think we'll have to wait for a bit and see how people use it. We also got a new sword and this one is called Shark Anchor. And it's a legendary sword and the way you get it is by getting the Monster Magnet from the shark hunter and then you have to go into the sea danger level 3 and 6 which is also something that's new and then you have to find the special terror shark with the anchor and don't worry guys we'll get into all of this stuff later so if you don't understand something just keep watching and the very first ability of this sword is called typhoon toss with 150 master requirement and for this one you basically just spin the sword around in the chain and you catch any enemy that's next to you and you deal a decent amount of damage and this is pretty similar to the doze sea ability next up we got armor breaker with 350 master requirement for this one you basically just dash forward uppercutting your enemy with the sword then it drags them with the sword and just slams them, doing a butt ton of damage. Overall, a pretty solid sword. Next up, we got a bunch of new accessories, and the first one we got here is called Leviathan Crown. And the way you get this accessory is actually pretty special. 
you actually have to craft it. You need one Dark Fragment, 10 Leviathan Scales, and 5 Electric Wings. And what this accessory gives you is 12% more damage on your melee attacks, 35% more damage to C events, 25 increased health regeneration, and 40% higher drop chance from C events. And one extra observation dodge. Next up, we got the Leviathan Shield, and this is a mythical accessory. And the things you need to get this is one Mirror Fractal, 30 Leviathan Scales, Electric Wings, and 20 Fool's Gold. This gives you 15% defense against melee, sword, and gun attacks, and a 30% defense against all C events, and 90% protection against C damage, and plus 1,250 health. A very solid ability, but it's very difficult to get as well. Next one we got here is the Terror Draw, and this is a legendary accessory. It gives you plus 10% sword damage, plus 10% skill cooldown reduction, 20% defense against C events, and 200 health and energy. And the way you can get this is from the Shark Hunter in Tiki Outpost. And you also have to craft it for 1 Terror Eyes, 2 Mutant Teeth, 10 Fool's Gold, and 5 Shark Teeth. Next up, we got the Shark Tooth Necklace, and this is a rare accessory. It basically just lets you run faster by 50%, it gives you a 10% increased dash distance, 25% more damage to sea events. And you can craft this in the same place for 1 Mutant Tooth and 5 Shark Teeth. Moving on from the accessories, we actually got a whole new island in this game, and it's called Tiki Outpost, and I'm sure you've all seen this. At this island, there's actually a bunch of new NPCs. The first one is the Spy, next we got the Beast Hunter NPC, the Shark Hunter, Safi, the Dragon Talon Sage, and those are the NPCs that you can buy stuff from and talk to. Now let's talk about the enemies that you're there to kill. First ones we got here is the Island Outlaw, then we got the Island Boy, the Island Champion, and the Sunkissed Warriors. Now let's talk about the NPCs on this island and what they do. The first NPC, which is a spy NPC, gives you clues about the Leviathan for 1,500 fragments, but I guess you can just watch a YouTube video for this. Next up is the Beast Hunter, and basically what this NPC does is help you craft two different accessories, and also a boat. He helps you craft the Leviathan's crown and the Leviathan shield, and he also helps you craft the Beast Hunter boat. Next up is the Shark Hunter NPC. He sells the Shark Tooth Necklace from before, the Terror Jaw, and the Monster Magnet, and these can all be very useful for sea events. Next up, we got the Shafi NPC, and this is the guy that sells you the new fighting style. Next up, we got the Dragon Talon Sage. And what you can do with this NPC is actually another new mechanic. You can enchant your swords and guns. We'll talk about that a bit later. Next up, we got a bunch of new boats in the game. First up, we got the Beast Hunter boat, and this boat actually looks very solid. It kind of has an ice theme going. To get this, you need to pay 20 Leviathan Scales, 6 Electric Wings, 2 Mutant Teeth, 30 Fool's Gold, and 6 Shark Teeth to the NPC from before. Next, we got reworks of a bunch of boats, and they're also renamed. Now we got a Lantern Boat, which you can buy from the Luxury Boat Dealer for 5,000 belly, and this replaced the flower ship from before. Next up, we got a boat called the Guardian. This one you can also buy for 5,000 belly from the Luxury Boat Dealer, and this one replaced the Swan Boat. Next up, we got the Miracle Boat, and this one you can only use with the Luxury Boats Game Pass, and you obviously spawn it from the Luxury Boat Dealer. Next up, we got the Sentinel, and this is a very, very solid boat. It costs a total of 1,000 belly to spawn, and a bunch of people can ride on it at the same time. And since you can buy it from the Luxury Boat Dealer, you already know it's a solid boat. And that's pretty much it for the boats, but let's talk a bit about the new sea events that were added into the game. The first one we got here is Treasure Island, and this is the event that happens when you're really far away from land. There's also a small amount of trees and rocks on the island, and a chance of getting chests. You also have a chance of getting fragment chests from this island. Next sea event we got here is the Ghost Ship sea event. And these were previously called Ship Raids, but now they're renamed and reworked. And basically what happens in this sea event is that there's a bunch of Brigade Ships and a bunch of Grand Brigade Ships. And once you defeat all of them, you have a small chance of getting a Blast Food, just like the old version. Next up we got the Terror Shark event, and this one is a level 2000 raid boss that has a chance to spawn when you're between C Danger level 2 to 6. And depending on which Danger level you're in, the Terror Shark will be stronger and harder to beat. And it's recommended not to go past level level 5 unless you have a death wish, but if you're a pro player at the game, then you do you. Next up is the Leviathan Sea Event, and not much is known about this sea event, but from what I know, it's probably one of the hardest sea events in the game. The boss has a total of 887,000 HP, that makes him super powerful. Other than that, I just know he's really hard to defeat, and he drops some stuff that you need for crafting. Moving on, we got a new level cap, obviously, because we got a new island and new NPCs, and that level cap is 2,550. And we also got a rework to the Dark Blade, the True Triple Katana, the Besento, the Coco, the Midnight Blade, the Pole First Form, the Pole Second Form, the Rengoku Sword, the Saber, Sadi, Shisui, Spiky Trident, Tushida, Wado, Yama, Dragon Trident, Long Sword, Pipe, Soul Cane, Trident, Triple Katana, Katana, Dual Katana, and Cutlass. Damn, that's a lot of swords. And we also got some reworks for the Kilo Fruit, which I mentioned before, it's now called 
the Rocket Fruit. We also got a rework to the Spin, which makes its new abilities slightly cooler and better in my opinion. Next fruit that was reworked is called Paw, and they just renamed it to Pain because of copyright. We also got a new thing in the game called Enchantments, which I mentioned a little bit before, and you can do it by using scrolls at the Dragon Talon stage. And there's so many enchantments in the game that I cannot mention them all in this video. I'll be sure to make a new video for them. Next up, we got scrolls, and this is what you actually use to enchant. And there's actually different ways to craft these scrolls. The first scroll can be crafted with three fool's gold and two shark teeth, and this is an uncommon scroll. To craft a rare scroll, you need two electric wings, five fool's gold, and four shark teeth. For a legendary scroll, you need five leviathan scales, three electric wings, one mutant tooth, seven fool's gold, and that's it. Next up is the mythical scrolls, and for these ones, you actually cannot craft. You have to buy the scrolls from the shop for robux, and each scroll costs a total of 500 robux. Next up, we got the cursed scrolls, and these ones, actually, we don't know if they exist, but we kind of saw them in the update 20 trailer, but it's not confirmed yet. Next, we got the blessed scrolls, and it's the same as the cursed. We don't know if they exist. And also, another minor change, you actually get a health bar on your screen when you're next to a raid boss, so you'll easily know how much damage to do to them, and it'll help a lot with raids. This is how you reach max bounty in a matter of minutes, and this is how you can awaken a fruit by completing the raid with the Buddha fruit. These are some of the craziest blocks with tricks that pros abuse that you don't. Okay, so the very first trick that I have on this list is something that I mentioned before a butt ton of times in my videos, but it's a really good trick, so I'm gonna tell you guys about it one more time. And this is how you get 50 levels in a matter of seconds. Everyone knows that when you spawn into the first sea, you're supposed to start grinding mobs at the very first island. That will be the pirate starter island or the marine starter island, depending on what you chose. But I'm telling you guys that this is the wrong way to play the game. The first thing that you wanna do once you enter the game is head over to the fountain city, the final island located in the first seed. And to be at this island, you're actually supposed to be like level 700 and something. But trust me, head over to this island. Then you're gonna find this NPC. You basically, what you're gonna do is lure him behind this wall. And this is the most important part of this trick because if you don't do that, then the NPC will instantly just kill you. Once you've done that, you're actually going to glitch the NPC, and since blocks with players and mobs can't do damage to each other through walls, you're going to be completely good. Even though the NPC tries to hit you, it won't do any damage. It's going to take a while, but once you kill him, you'll get a butt ton of levels all at the same time. So if you're very new to the game, I recommend doing this trick, but don't do it more than like two or three times, then it gets kind of useless. But if you have any friends that are just starting the game, make sure you recommend this trick to them. It's very useful. Okay, since a lot of you watching this video are actually new to blocks with and don't know how the teams work, I'm going to be telling you guys about marines and pirates. You can earn bounty or honor honor depending on which team you are. If you're a pirate, then you earn bounty, and if you're a marine, you earn honor. Once you become a pirate, the leaderboard will show you how much bounty you have, and the way you obtain bounty is by killing other players within a 200 to 300 level gap within yourself. Which means if you kill someone that has a level that's 400 less than your own, then you won't get anything, because then the game knows you're kind of just bullying on newer players. Another thing worth mentioning is that you cannot actually do damage to anyone until you pass level 15, and the reason the devs added this to the game is to prevent people from spawn camping people that just started the game. You can also raise your bounty by defeating bosses, and once you reach a 20 million bounty, you actually stop gaining any bounty from killing bosses, so that's where most people cap off at. Because usually you're just trying to level up and reach max level, so you don't really have time for bounty hunting. And pirates are obviously more widely picked than the two teams, because pirates are just way cooler, and let's be honest, who wants to be a marine? Alright, there's two advantages that pirates actually have over marines, and the first one is that you can create a crew, and a lot of you might be wondering what a crew is. A crew in Bloxfoots is something that you can create once you reach level 300, and you can invite people to that crew, add a logo, assemble a crew, gather bounty, and reach the top 50th place on the leaderboard. And obviously, you lose bounty if you die to bosses or players in combat, and the amount of bounty you lose depends on how powerful the boss or player that killed you was. And you can also buy some upgrades to hold a bunch of extra people, if you head over to the graveyard island, there's an NPC that sells your crew slot for 2,000 fragments. And if you want to buy 15 extra member slots, which is the max, that will cost you a total of 30,000 fragments. Probably not something you want to be doing. And overall, that's just pretty much what crews do. If you reach the top 10 place, you get a special title called Pirate King, and that's something everybody wants. This also builds into one of the disadvantages of the pirate side. When you're a pirate, you're not allied with every other pirate. But when you're a marine, you're actually allied with every other marine. So it's kind of hard to fight against the marines when it comes to team fights. And you can't 100% trust your teammate. And obviously, if you are a pirate, ships are a little bit more expensive, and you just have to spend a bunch of extra cash every time you want to buy a ship. And obviously, if you got a bounty on yourself, it makes you more prone to bounty hunters, so you're gonna constantly have to keep on the run. Unless you're a total god in PvP, in which case you can just fend them off. Now I have some trivia for the pirate team. If a pirate equips the Vice Admiral's coat that you get from defeating the Vice Admiral boss at Marine Fortress, then the coat will actually change its logo from a Marine logo to a pirate logo. Because it doesn't make any sense if a pirate's literally wearing a Marine coat. Another thing is that once you reach a certain level of bounty, you'll actually earn titles for it, but this is only available in the second and third scene. Overall, that's pretty much it for pirates, there's not much else you can do, but let's move on to marines.
So moving on to Marines, they're a little bit different and you'll find out why. Marines actually have a slight advantage when it comes to overall quality of life changes in the game. So Marines boats are actually 50% cheaper and slightly faster than the other boats. And you also get a cool color to show that you are a Marine. And obviously Marines cannot attack fellow Marines. So unlike pirates who can attack each other, Marines can actually team up and gang up on pirates. Which makes fighting pirates a little bit easier, even if your level is lower. And obviously you can collect bounties of pirates for a little bit of extra money. But most bounty hunters are actually in the third C and they just do it for fun once they've completed the game. Normally in Blocks Fruits you want to be focusing on reaching max level, not on bounty hunting. Here's another fun fact that you might have not known. Marines can actually ally with pirates, but not through a crew or anything. You can just simply invite them to your party. You can kind of fight together, I guess. At least you can't do damage to each other, but overall, it's just a pretty weird update. But Marines' disadvantage is that they cannot create crews, which isn't really a disadvantage when you think about it, because they're already all on the same team, so it makes no sense for them to create crews. And also, Marines are rare, but this is probably the most dangerous disadvantage, because no one chooses Marines. Like, go into any Blossom server right now, everyone what is a pirate? Marines are just not that cool, I guess. Okay, so this next trick I got here is actually probably one of the most useful tricks on this whole list. Well, it's to increase your bounty. Everyone that's in the second and third sea should already know what I'm talking about. There's a secret island located in this sea that a lot of first sea players do not know about, and this is the island which spawns the mob leader. You only have to go to this island when you're doing the quest to get to the second sea, so a lot of you definitely have not been here. But the trick comes into play when you kill this boss. After you kill him, you only have to wait for one minute for him to respawn. And why is this useful? Every time you kill this boss you get a plus 3,000 bounty and if you keep farming him that's 180,000 bounty in literally just one hour that is a crazy amount once you hit the max bounty for bosses which is 2 million bounty that's when you have to stop killing him but to get that instant 2 million bounty this is definitely the place you want to head to next trick we got here basically lets you see underneath the entire blast roots map and there's actually a bunch of glitches in game that let you do this but this one is pretty unique so all you have to do is equip the fruit that lets you go up and a very good fruit for this is the kilo fruit once you equip this fruit all you have to do is go to a very very high location on the map you can choose this for yourself because there are a bunch of high locations but i'm gonna be doing it here once you do that all you have to do is go into your settings and turn your graphics to the worst they can be and make sure your graphics are not on automatic you have to change them to manual once you set your graphics to low all you have to do is simply activate the kilo fruits ability and boom once you fly high enough you should be able to see what's underneath the blocks fruits map and this might come as a surprise to some of you but it's the earth underneath there that is crazy which means we're actually not on earth Anyways, that's just a pretty cool trick to do and doesn't have much other practical use. But the next one definitely does, so make sure you stay tuned. Bye, have a great time. Okay, so this next trick I got here is almost as useful as the first one. This basically lets you awaken a fruit by not completing the raid with that specific fruit. So you can basically complete the raid with the Buddha and unlock the Quake fruit. Huh? And the way you do this is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is select the raid like normal. And all you have to do is finish the raid like normal with your Buddha fruit. And then once you're on the very last island of the raid, I'm pretty sure that's the fifth island, you kill the boss and make sure you leave at least one of the NPCs alive. Make sure you do not kill the NPC that is very crucial towards this trick. Once you've done that, all you have to do is go into your inventory and equip the fruit. Then you just gotta eat that fruit and then finish off the last NPC that's on low HP with your fruit. Boom, you've awakened one of the abilities of the flame fruit or any other fruit that you choose. But this is a very useful trick and you can use this to awaken any fruit in the game. Alrighty, now I'm gonna be telling you about the fastest fruit in the whole of Blox Fruits. And some of you might be thinking that the fastest fruit is actually the awakened Doe's Donut. I'll tell you from personal experience, it is not the fastest fruit. And no, it's not the light fruit either. Because I'm like 100% sure that at least 90% of you guys were thinking about the life fruit. Sorry to break it to you guys, but it is not the fastest fruit in the game. Well, it's actually the portal fruit, because unlike the life fruit, instead of actually taking time to get to your location, you can zip from island to island with the portal fruit in literally zero seconds, because that's how long portal travel takes. It's instant. So if you want to zip from place to place, that's definitely the fruit you want to get. But if you're talking about actual flying abilities, then it's probably the life fruit. It's unbeatable in that. I'm going to be telling you about every single mythical fruit in Blocks Fruits, as well as some secret things you did not know about them. Okay, so the very first mythical fruit I got on the list is the gravity fruit. And a lot of you don't even know that this fruit exists because you rarely see it. Because in my opinion, it's probably the worst mythical fruit in the game. This is a fruit that costs a total of 2,500,000 belly. Or 2,300 Robux from the Blocks fruit dealer. And this is one of the rare type fruits in the game which actually has an animation on its fruit. And it actually looks pretty cool. But let's get started with the abilities. The very first ability of this fruit is called gravity push. And this one obviously has a one master requirement. So you get it as soon as 
once you get the fruit. This one, you basically just create a huge shockwave in front of you, which goes flying for a short amount of distance. And if someone gets hit by this, they get sent flying backwards with a butt ton of damage dealt to them. Next ability is the X ability, and this one is called Gravity Obsidians, and it has a hundred mastery requirement. For this one, you basically create a huge circle around you and start raining down a bunch of gravity on people. Well, you can't really rain down gravity, but there's really cool effects for this ability. And everyone that's inside the circle actually gets trapped in with you, and a butt ton of damage is continuously dealt to them. Next ability is called Meteor Pitch, and this one has a 200 mastery requirement. For this one, you basically just shoot a huge purple beam into the sky, and then you can summon a meteor onto the floor with that beam. But it's only one meteor, and the place it lands depends on where your cursor is, so make sure you aim well. Next ability we got here is the V ability, and this one is called Meteor's Rain, and it has a 300 mastery requirement. And for this one, it's kind of like the previous ability, but instead of one huge meteor, it's a button of smaller meteors, and these ones are pretty fast, so they're pretty hard to dodge. Finally, we got the movement ability, and I actually have not seen this ability used once in game. It's called Boulder Flight, and for this one, you basically just summon a rideable boulder, which actually mimics the materials that are underneath it. It's basically kind of invisible, and really hard to see. Then you basically just roll around on that boulder. This could probably be one of the worst movement abilities in the game, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so now let's talk about some pros and cons of this fruit. The pros are that it does decent damage, it's obviously a mythical fruit, so it's high up there, but out of all the mythical fruits, I would probably say that this one's the worst, just because of its abilities overall but that's it for this fruit let's head over to the next one Okay, so next up, the fruit we got here is one that you guys are definitely not expecting, and it is the dough fruit. Can you believe that the dough fruit is literally the second cheapest mythical fruit? I didn't even know that before I started making this video. The dough fruit costs a total of 2,800,000 belly, or 2,400 robux from the blocks fruit dealer. And the reason this fruit is actually really insane is because of its awakening moves, and not because of its normal moves. To awaken this fruit, it costs a total of 18,500 fragments, making it one of the hardest fruits to awaken in the whole game. And to even unlock the dough raid, you have to kill the dough king, which is even more tedious. Since the V2 abilities are the only relevant abilities of this fruit, I'm going to be talking about those. So first up, we got an M1 ability for the dough fruit, and this one is called Dough Fist. And all you have to do is simply just left click, and you can basically just pull out a dough donut out of nowhere and just punch people. This has a one second cooldown and one second end lag, and it's also chargeable. And when you charge it, you actually get two hits instead of one. The very first official ability of the fruit is called Missile Jab, and this is the Z ability. To awaken it, you need 500 fragments, and this is probably one of my favorite abilities in the whole game, just because of the sound effects it actually sounds amazing you just charge up a huge dough fist and you shoot it towards wherever you're aiming and it deals a butt ton of damage and knockback next ability we got here is called pastry river and to awaken this you need 3,000 fragments and this ability actually has two different variants one is when you're standing on the ground and the other one is when you're midair if you're midair and you use this ability you basically just lock the character into place and you pummel them around with a bunch of dough fists and they go flying all over the place but if you're standing on the floor then it just spawns in a huge spike from underneath dealing a butt ton of damage to them and which one you want to use completely depends on you Next up, we got the C ability, and this is called Piercing Clothes Sign. For this one, you basically just roll towards your enemy, and you grab them with a dough fist, you swing them around, and you slam them into the floor, dealing a butt ton of damage. Next ability is the V ability, and everyone knows the V ability of each fruit is usually the strongest, and this one is called Dough Fist for Sleed. And to awaken this ability, you need to pay a total of 5,000 fragments, and this is a really overpowered ability, maybe even the best ability in the whole game, because it literally locks a character in place, and it just keeps dealing a butt ton of damage to them continuously. And there's no way to escape this ability once once you get hit with it. Very overpowered. Next up, we got the movement ability called Scorching Donut, which costs 2,000 fragments to awaken. For this one, you basically just spawn in a donut and you can roll over wherever you want, up walls and through the water. And the unawakened version of this ability can only roll on land. What a useless ability. Just use the life fruit at that point. Overall, I would say the dough fruit is probably one of my favorite fruits in the whole game, and definitely, in my opinion, the best fruit for PvP, followed closely by a second fruit. But I don't think you guys are gonna be getting this fruit anytime soon, similar to all the other fruits on this list, because they're all mythical. But, anyways, let's head over to the next one. Next fruit we got here is called Shadow, and this is a mythical fruit that costs 2,900,000 belly, or 2,425 robux from the blocks fruit dealer. And this fruit actually has a thing called the Umbra meter, which can be drained using the V ability, but we'll get into that later. Very first ability of this fruit is called Somber Rebellion, and this has a one master requirement. For this one, you basically fly towards someone and you just lock them in place, dealing a butt ton of damage to them, then you go flying into the sky for some reason. Pretty weird ability. Next up is the X ability, and this one is called Shade Nest, with a hundred master requirement. This one, you shoot a small shadow-like projectile towards your enemy, and you can obviously aim this using your cursor, just like most other abilities in the game. And once this projectile hits your enemy, you'll actually see a few crows that will fly nearby. Not sure, but it looks pretty cool. And it also deals a bit of damage to your enemy. Now we got the C ability, and this one is called Nightmare Leech, with a 200 master requirement. Damn, that's a very cool name for an ability. And this is actually similar to the first ability of this fruit, where you dash towards your enemy, you lock them in place, and deal a butt ton of damage. The pretty cool thing about this ability is that you will actually regain 20% of your max 
max health and still deal a good amount of damage to your enemy. And this is similar to the God Human C ability. Pretty cool. Next ability is the V ability with a 300 master requirement. And this one is called Corvus Torment. This one, you basically just spawn in a bunch of shadows around. And this will actually start draining the Umbra meter that I mentioned before. And this will create a huge explosion that deals a butt ton of damage and leaves a swarm of bats behind. And there's actually no way to escape from this ability unless you have the flash step ability, which pretty much everyone does. But maybe you won't think of using it when you're in a PvP match. You can also escape it using the pause F ability, the dark fruits F ability, and the rumble fruits F ability. Finally, let's get into the movement ability for this fruit. It's called Umbarage. This is basically just a copy of the flame fruits abilities. You kind of just fly around in the sky, but instead of fire, there's a bunch of bats and shadows following you. Pretty cool. But that's it for this fruit. Let's head over to the next one. Next fruit we got on this list is something I'm sure a lot of you have already seen, and this is the Venom Fruit. It costs a total of 3 million belly, or 2,450 Robux from the Bloss Fruit Dealer. And this fruit is actually one of the most powerful fruits in the game when it comes to PvP, and it's usually compared to the Awakened Doe or the Dragon. So this fruit actually has a transformation, so it has a different set of abilities when it's transformed versus when it's not. Or I guess they kind of just look different. The very first ability we got here is called Poison Daggers, which has a 1 master requirement. For this one, you kind of just shoot a beam of Venom wherever you're aiming it's recommended to jump into the sky when you use this because otherwise it's pretty hard to aim next up we got the x ability called noxious shot which has a hundred mastery requirement for this one also you should probably jump into the sky to use and similar to the first ability you actually shoot a huge poison blob but instead of a bunch of small blobs it's just one huge one which deals a butt ton of damage to your enemy next ability is the c ability and this one is called toxic fog with a 200 mastery requirement this one you just create a bunch of venom smoke around you which deals a butt ton of damage to your enemies when you walk next to them and even if they walk away from the cloud after getting hit it still deals like three to four ticks of damage to them which is pretty similar to the x move of this ability next up is the v ability with a 300 mastery requirement and this one is the transformation and can i just say that this is probably one of my favorite transformations in the whole of blocks roots because just look how sick it looks you turn into a three-headed hydra which is covered in venom that is insane and basically what this transformation does is it just buffs all your other abilities letting you deal way more damage with them and you also have some passive venom abilities and did i mention it also increases your defense by 62% damn that's OP finally let's talk about the movement ability from this fruit it's called serpent's wrath with a 50 mastery requirement for this one you basically just fly around on a serpent head very basic flying ability but it's probably one of the coolest looking ones in the game it's a very creative way to make a flying ability and it also looks really badass but that's it for this fruit let's head over to the next one Next fruit that we got on this list is probably one of the coolest fruits in the whole game, and I'm obviously talking about the control fruit. This fruit costs a total of 3,200,000 belly, or 2,500 robux from the blocks fruit dealer. And the reason I said this is one of the coolest fruits is just because of the way that the abilities work. The very first ability we got here is called control area, and this is actually the main part of the ability. It obviously has a one master requirement, and you basically just create a huge dome, and that's where you can actually use your fruits abilities. Outside, it's kind of useless, and I would mainly say that that is the only drawback of this route. The rest of this is dope. First actual ability is the X ability and it's called levitate and this basically lets you pick up anything that's inside the dome. Trees, houses, even the floor itself. You name it and you can pick it up. Well except for the island. You can't really pick up the whole island. That would make no sense. And once you pick this up you can actually throw it or launch it towards wherever you want and it deals a decent amount of damage. Nothing too special. Next ability we got here is the C ability and this one is called echo knife with 150 master requirement. For this one basically what you do is you lock your enemy in place and start poking them with with your knife and this one deals a decent amount of damage at least a little bit more than the levitate ability next up is the v ability and this one is called gamma rush with a 350 master requirement for this one you basically just lock your enemy in place and start dashing all around the dome and when you use this ability it actually gives you a cool cinematic view of what you're doing to your enemy you're literally cooking them and this one actually deals a lot more damage compared to the previous two abilities next ability is the movement ability for this fruit and it's just simply teleporting with a 250 master requirement and the only drawback is that you can only teleport inside the dome but it has way longer range than your average flash step it's even better than the human race's flash step very cool anyways that's pretty much it for this fruit let's head over to the next one now we're heading over to the spirit fruit. This is a mythical fruit that costs a total of 3,400,000 belly or 2,550 robux from the blocks fruit dealer. And this fruit actually used to be called the soul fruit, but it was renamed because of copyright. Anyways, let's get into the abilities. The very first ability is the tap ability. And this basically just summons your buddies, which help you with fights. But the first actual ability is called frostfire grasp. And this is the Z ability with a one master requirement. For this one, you basically jump on your angel buddy and you fly towards the position of your cursor and then you summon a huge ice block that does a button of damage and stuns people well that's only if you can aim it well next ability is called wrath of raw with 150 master requirement and for this one you basically just send your demon buddy to the position of your cursor and it just spawns in a huge pillar of fire 
you're dealing a butt ton of damage to whatever is there. Next ability is called Wrath of Shu. And similar to the fire ability, this one, instead of fire, is a huge ice attack. Or kind of a water attack, I guess. But ice makes more sense. And this ability deals a butt ton of AoE damage. So try not to get hit when you're fighting this. Next ability is called End of Times. And this one is when you command both your angel buddy and your demon buddy. And you shoot a beam of ice and fire towards your cursor, stunning your enemies and dealing a butt ton of damage to them. Next ability is the movement ability, Sky Ruler with a 75 mastery requirement. And for this one, you basically just hop on one of your buddies and you can fly to wherever you want. Pretty cool movement ability, and I'll give this a 9 out of 10 for creativity. But anyways, that's pretty much it. Let's get into the next fruit. Next fruit we got here is called the Dragon Fruit, and I'm sure a lot of you already know about this. This is a fruit that costs a total of 3,500,000 belly or 2,600 Robux from the Blocks Fruit Dealer. And the cool thing about this ability is that it actually has the biggest transformation out of any fruit in the whole game. And stay tuned to see what it looks like. Very first ability we got here is called Heat Wave Beam with a one master requirement. And this ability does exactly what it sounds like. You kind of just shoot a huge beam that creates a massive explosion at the end and deals a butt ton of damage. Next ability is called Dragonic Claw with 150 master requirement. And for this ability, you kind of just dash forward, grabbing your enemy and dealing a butt ton of damage to them. And your enemy cannot escape in any way, shape or form after you grab them. So you're basically guaranteed damage. Next ability is called Fire Shower with 250 mastery requirement. For this one, you basically just jump into the sky and similar to one of the Light Fruits ability, you just start raining down a bunch of energy, but instead of light, it's fire. Next ability is the Transformation with a 350 mastery requirement. And for this one, you transform into a massive dragon and just look at how huge you are. And to transform, you actually have to have your Fury Meter filled all the way. Next ability is the F ability and this one is called Dragon Flight. And it kind of becomes useless once you activate the transformation because then you're flying by default. But regardless, it's a pretty Pretty cool movement ability because he literally spawn in wings but that's it for the dragon fruit let's head on to the final fruit let's see if you guys can guess what it is leave your guess in the comments all right the very final fruit on this list and it's obviously going to be the leopard fruit the most expensive fruit in the whole of blocks fruits this fruit costs a total of 5 million belly or 3,000 robux from the blocks fruit dealer and this fruit is actually considered one of the best fruits in pvp door fruit is still better but this one comes in second place anyways let's get started with the abilities very first ability we got on the list is called finger revolver and even though it sounds pretty pathetic it's actually really strong with the one mastery requirement you can just send in a bunch of bullets flying all across where your curse is aiming and at the end of that storm you shoot one massive fiery bullet and these bullets all deal a butt ton of damage if used correctly next ability is called spiraling kick and this one has a 50 master requirement and it does exactly what it sounds like you kind of just shoot an air kick and if someone gets caught in it then they get sent flying with that kick next ability is called after image assault and for this one you basically just blitz all across the sky and as soon as you reach your enemy you just hit them a bunch of times and send them flying into the ground with a bunch of fire and this ability actually breaks observation so it's very good for pvp next ability is the the v ability with a 300 master requirement and this one is that transformation where you turn into a whole leopard aren't leopards supposed to be on all fours whatever this blocks roots it doesn't matter basically what this ability does is it gives you a 10 percent damage reduction and a passive left click ability and you can deal a butt ton of damage if you use this ability but it also kind of takes no skill because you just have to spam left click and you can be a pvp lord next ability is the movement ability called body flicker with a 200 master requirement for this one you kind of just flicker all over the place and it actually deals damage if you catch an enemy midway Way. Very cool movement ability. But that's it for this fruit. I'm gonna be telling you about the craziest swords in each sea in Blocks Fruits, and these swords keep getting crazier and crazier as we go on, so make sure you watch all the way till the end. Okay, so the first crazy sword that I got on the list is called the Bicento, and I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about this. It's a legendary sword, and it costs a total of 1 million belly to buy, and you can buy from an NPC who's called the Master Sword Dealer. And this guy's located at Skylands, and you have to be at least level 250 to buy it. You can also upgrade it to Grade 2, which takes 50 metal scraps, 12 12 angel wings, 10 magma rocks, and this increases the weapon's damage by a whopping 25%. Okay, so let's talk about the V2 abilities. The first V2 ability is called Windbreaker, and this is the Z ability with a 50 master requirement. And for this one, you launch three flying spears in the direction of your cursor, and it deals a button of damage to your enemy, pushing them back. Next ability is called Quake Spear, and this is the X ability of the sword, and it has a 150 master requirement. For this one, you basically just create a huge air ball and get sent flying in the direction of your cursor. And if it actually ends up hitting someone, it actually locks them in place and just creates a pretty tiny explosion. Overall, really good things about the sword is that it has high damage, it's good for grinding because it has multi-target skills and good AoE damage, and also pretty low mass requirements, so it kind of makes it perfect for the first seat. The Windbreaker ability has decent range, and the Quake Spear ability, it can be used to trap players. Unfortunately, it is not a hybrid sword, so it's only good for grinding. When it comes to PvP, I'm not really sure if you should be using this, because its abilities are not suited for that. But I guess the trapping ability is pretty decent. But anyways, let's head over to the next sword. 
Okay, so the next decent sword that you can get in the first C is the pole first form. And do not get this confused with the second form because the pole V2 is just from a different world. So the pole V1 is a legendary sword and you can get it by defeating the Thunder God who's located on Upper Sky. And you have a measly 5% of getting the sword dropped to you. And the sword actually also has a grade 2 which you can upgrade it to for 10 radioactive rocks, 20 metal scraps, and 10 angel wings. And this increases the sword's damage by 25%. Now let's talk about the abilities. The very first ability of this sword is called Explosive Cloud and this is the Z ability with the 80 master requirement. For this one, you basically just spawn in a huge black cloud and it just dishes out a bunch of lightning, similar to one of the abilities of the Rumble Fruit. Next ability is called Lightning Rain, and this is the X ability. It has a 180 master requirement, and you basically just rain down lightning wherever your cursor is. And these two abilities kind of make no sense, because why does a sword have the power of lightning? And for the second ability, man, come on, that's literally just a copy-paste of one of the Rumble Fruits abilities. What the heck is this? Overall, the sword has mediocre stuns, decent damage, and pretty low master requirement, which makes it decent for the first C. And I definitely recommend getting your hands on that. It's really good for PvP and pretty decent for grinding as well. Okay, now this next sword I got on the list is still a first C sword, but it's actually a sword that does the most damage out of any sword in the whole game. The Saber. It's a legendary sword and the way you get it is by defeating the Saber Expert. And he has a 100% chance of dropping it. To unlock the V2, you have to earn 1 million bounty or honor. And you have to kill another player that has a similar level to you. Pretty easy to do. So you should have no trouble unlocking the V2. You need 5 radioactive rocks, 10 metal scraps, and 10 magma rocks. But unlike the previous two swords, this only increases the damage by 15%, which is still really good. But anyways, let's talk about the abilities. The very first ability is called Deadly Rush, with a 50 mastery requirement. For this one, you just send forward a huge bunch of sword strikes, and they dish out a decent amount of damage. Next ability is called Triple Slash, and this is the X ability with 125 mastery requirement. You just shoot forward a gush of sword energy, and it looks pretty cool and way better than the version 1 ability. Overall, this sword has really good damage, literally the best in the whole game. It has decent hitbox on its attacks, and you can literally get this sword as soon as you're level 200. And since you can get it so early, it's a very good starter weapon. But some bad things I would say about the sword is that it does not break instinct even though it does a lot of damage, but fighting against someone with observation are very very low. And also has pretty low travel potential compared to other swords. Since it's the most harmful sword in the game, I'm gonna give this an S tier for the first C. Let's head over to the next one. Okay. Okay, so now heading on to the second C, the first crazy sword I got here is a Wado, and this is a legendary sword. You can get it from the legendary sword dealer for a whopping 2 million belly. And this sword does have a grade 2, which you can upgrade to for 8 mystic droplets and 10 leather, and increases the damage by 15%. The very first ability of this sword is continuous slashing. This is the Z ability, and it has 150 master requirement. You basically just dish out a bunch of rapid slashes of your enemies next to you and if they're far away well too bad the range is pretty short but if you do get them locked in then they cannot leave until you finish doing all the damage the next ability is the X ability, and this one is called Scatter Shot with a 300 master requirement. You kind of just shoot a bunch of mini bursts from your sword, and they scatter all over the place. And if you end up hitting your enemy, good job, good job. because it's kind of RNG. But overall, this sword is really, really good. It has really high damage, and it's one of the best swords for grinding and PvP in the second C, and that makes it a hybrid sword. The Z ability has good stuns and decent knockback, and the Scatter Shot ability is good for combos and it has decent range. But some bad things I would say is that it's a pretty bad sword for PvP compared to the third C swords. But if you're still in the second see then using this sword should be absolutely no problem all right next up we got Sadi. And this is a legendary sword and you get it from the exact same NPC as the sword before. The legendary sword dealer for the same price, 2 million belly. This sword also has a grade 2 which you can upgrade to for 8 mystic droplets and 10 leather which increases the sword's damage by 15%. Let's talk about the abilities. The first ability is called Sword Dance and this is the Z ability of the sword with 150 master requirement. You basically dash forward towards where your cursor is and then you just dance around with your sword dealing a bunch of damage in the process. Next ability is called True Air Slash and this is the X ability of the sword with a 300 master requirement. For this one you just shoot a huge golden slash which goes in the direction of your cursor and it pushes enemies back and deals a butt ton of damage to them. Overall, this sword has good damage, good hitboxes, decent combo potential, and pretty good for farming. But the only bad thing I would say is that it has pretty mediocre range. And the sword dance ability is kind of hard to hit if you have bad aim. But other than that, it's a pretty good sword for the second season. <laughs> Okay, so the next sword on the list is called Shisui, and this is one of the three legendary swords infused with a ghost. Stop the cap. <laughs> But that's what the sword's description says. Anyways, this sword costs a total of 2 million belly to buy, and you can buy from an NPC called the Legendary Sword Dealer. 
This sword also has a grade 2, which you can upgrade to for 8 Mystic Droplets and 10 Leather, and increases the sword's damage by 10%. Now let's talk a bit about the abilities. First ability we got here is called the True Quiet Rush, with 150 Master Requirement. Basically just dash forward, instantly dealing a butt-ton of damage to your enemy. Next up is called Focus Shot, with a 300 Master Requirement. Just shoot out a beam of energy straight forward, and it looks pretty unique for a sword move. It almost looks like one of the abilities from the Gravity Fruit. It deals a butt-ton of damage and a little bit of knockback. First thing is that it has very, very good range, Fast moves with low end lag and really good combo potential and also deals pretty decent damage for the second C. But it does have small hitboxes and it does not break observation, not even a single ability. But overall I would still say it's a really good sword for the second C. That leads us to the next sword here, the true triple katana. And this is the first mythical sword that I have here on this list of crazy swords. And it costs a total of 2 million belly to buy from the oh Mysterious God. Man NPC. And the reason this is a really overpowered sword is because it's actually a combination of 3 other legendary katanas. It's the Wado plus the Shisui and the Sadi, which each cost a total of 2 million belly. So that's literally 6 million belly just for 3 of them. Then you have to obtain a 300 mastery on each of those 3 swords. Then you have to travel to the green zone by the true triple katana for 2 million belly. So the sword actually costs 8 million belly. Damn, that's more expensive than the costliest fruit. This sword also has a grade 2, which you can upgrade to for 5 dragon scales, 20 mystic droplets, and 50 leather. Now let's talk about the abilities. The very first ability we got here is the wolf fang rush with 150 mastery requirement. Kinda exactly what it sounds like, you just dash forward and you deal a button of damage to your enemy all in one strike. And also stuns your enemy for a decent amount of time, so this gives you time to use a second ability on them. Dragon Hurricane. This is the X ability of the sword with a 350 master requirement. You basically just spawn in a Dragon Hurricane, just like the name states. And this Hurricane actually traps players in them and does not let them get out, and deals a butt ton of damage to them, hitting them multiple times. The good things about this sword is that it's great for grinding and both moves have little to no knockback. Really good for raids because of its large hitboxes and very high damage per click. So you can literally just spam people and kill them. The Z ability has decent mobility and it briefly stuns as well. It also drains observation fast, gives them minus 3 dodges. The cons of this sword I would say is that how difficult it is to get, man. You literally have to pay 8 million belly and you need to get your hands on 3 different swords. Pretty much the only thing I can think of is just very very expensive. If you end up getting this, you'll literally be undefeated. Well, in the second C that is. Let's head over to the third C. Okay, so we're finally moving on to the third C, and the very first crazy sword we got here is the Cursed Dual Katana. And this is obviously a mythical sword, and I'm sure a lot of you already know about this. And to get this, you basically have to have a 350 mastery on the Yama and Kushida swords, both A tier swords from the third C. And once you do that, you have to complete the long and tedious Cursed Dual Katana puzzle. And you have to be at least level 2200 to do this. And the sword also does have a grade 2, which costs 10 flames, 10 tusks, and 60 metal scraps, and then increases the sword's damage by 7%. Anyways, let's talk about the abilities, and this sword actually has three different abilities. Well, it kinda depends on how you use them. The very first ability is called Revolting Ravager, and this is the Z ability with 175 mastery requirement. You just spin around and you shoot out a huge energy blast, which consists of black and red lightning, and it looks really cool. Probably one of the best sword effects in the whole game. The next ability is called Slayer of Goliath, with a 375 mastery requirement, and this one actually has two different moves depending on how you use them. The very first ability basically just dashes you forward. You can kinda use it as a movement ability. And the second variation of this ability is when you charge it up, which basically just gives you way more distance. And if you actually hit a player while using this ability, you deal a butt ton of damage to them, and it also breaks instinct. Good things about this sword is that it's probably the best sword in the whole game, well other than the triple dark blade, because that's just way too overpowered. This sword has great range, great for combos, decent mobility, very high damage, and if you want to use a sword while grinding with the butterfoot, this is probably the one you want to use. But there's still one sword that can kind of compete with this, but this one's still the best in my books. The next sword we got on this list, also from the third C, is the Halo Scythe, and this is actually another mythical sword from the third C. And the way you get it is by defeating the Soul Reaper boss and only has a 5% chance of dropping. This sword also has a grade 2 which you can get to for 8 flames, 800 bones, and 25 metal scraps and increases the sword's damage by 10%. The very first ability we got here is Death Cycle with 150 master requirement. For this one you basically just shoot forward a flaming cycle which has orange and black flames and it looks really really cool. If someone gets hit by this it deals a butt ton of damage to them and also knocks them back pretty far. The next ability is called Soul Execution. This is the X ability with a 350 master requirement. For this ability, you basically just fly around with your sword until you hit your enemy, and then you deal a butt ton of damage to them. And it also deals a good amount of damage and knockback. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of this sword. This sword has very, very fast M1 abilities, especially if you pair it with the Buddha fruit. It has very little casting time. And the only downside of this sword is how hard it is to get. Literally only a 5% chance, and it literally takes the Halo Essence to spawn it in, so you're not gonna be fighting that boss a lot. But overall, it's still an S tier sword in the whole of Lost Fruits. 
I'm gonna tell you about every single enchant that was added to Blocks Woods in Update 20, as well as some secret enchantments that you definitely did not know about. Okay, so I'm pretty sure all of you already know what enchantments are. They're obviously a new thing that was added in Update 20, one of the biggest updates in the history of Blocks Roots. And the way you enchant your weapons is by using scrolls and talking to an NPC called the Dragon Talon Sage. This NPC is located at the Tiki Outpost Island, the new island that was added to the third sea. Now I'll talk a bit about the enchantments, and there's a butt ton of them, so lock in. Huh? Alright, the very first enchantment we got here is called Agile, and this reduces cooldowns by 6%. And that's only the level 1. For level 2, it reduces the cooldowns by 9%, and for the level 3, it reduces the cooldowns by 12%. And the way you put this enchantment on a weapon is by getting a scroll that has this enchantment. Next enchantment we got here is called Beast, and what this does is it increases the damage dealt to Beast users. And if you guys don't know, Beast is a category of Devil Fruit, simply any fruit that has a transformation. Stuff like the Falcon, Buddha, Leopard, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Alright, for the stage 1 increases the damage by 3%, for stage 2 it's 6%, for stage 3 it's 9%, for stage 4 it's 12%, and for stage 5 it's 15%. Next up we got the Deadly Enchant, and for this one it increases the overall damage that you do to players. For stage 1 you got a 2% increase, for stage 2 you got a 4% increase, for stage 3 you got a 6% increase, for stage 4 you got an 8%, and for stage 5 you got a 10% increase. And this seems like a really small amount, but when you compare the overall damage that you do to someone, this is definitely gonna help killing them. Next up we got the Efficient enchant and what this does is increases the xp you get from npcs stage 1 increases it by 15 percent stage 2 by 30 stage 3 by 45 and stage 4 by 60 percent that that is overpowered if you get level 4 next up we got elemental and just like the beast this increases the amount of damage you do to everybody with an elemental fruit fruits like the light ice flame basically any fruit that's an element for the stage 1 increases by 3 percent for stage 2 6 percent for stage 3 9 percent for stage 4 12 percent and for stage 5 15 percent next up we got the fortune Enchant and I think you guys guess what this does it increases the total amount of money that you get from NPCs for level 1 increases by 15% for stage 2 it's 30% for stage 3 45% and for stage 4 65% next up we got the lucky enchant and this increases the drop rates from NPCs for level 1 we got a 5% increase for level 2 we got a 10% increase for level 3 and 4 it's actually unknown because no one's actually gotten those scrolls yet but I'm guessing it should be like 20 and then level 4 like 40 or maybe even 30 I'm not sure next up we got the natural enchant and just like the beast and elemental enchant this is for people that have a natural type devil fruit and stage one increases the damage by three percent stage two by six stage three by nine stage four by twelve and stage five by fifteen percent next up we got the piercing ability it ignores a certain percentage of defensive buffs for level one ignores seven percent of defensive buffs for level two it, it ignores 14 percent for level three it ignores 21 percent for stage four it ignores 28 very solid scrolls in my opinion next up we got the sharp enchant and what this does it increases the total damage that you do to NPCs. Level 1 increases by 3%, level 2 by 6, level 3 by 9, level 4 by 12, and level 5 by 15. Next up we got the Siphon ability, and I think a lot of you should already know what this means if you play some other games. Siphon is basically when you regenerate a certain percentage of damage you do to someone. Say you have a 10% Siphon, and you do 100 damage to a player, then you'll regenerate 10. So anyways, let's get into the levels. For level 1, you regenerate 4% of, of the damage you do. For level 2, it's 6. Level 3 and 4 are unknown because no one has those scrolls yet, but I'm guessing it should be 8, and the next one should be 10. Next up we got the Vampire Enchant. For this one you actually regenerate from your total health, so it's a lot better. Vampire Enchant only has 3 different levels. For the first one you heal a total of 4%, for the level 2 you heal a total of 6%, and for the level 3 you heal 10%. Now let's get into the unique enchantments, and these are enchantments that are pretty hard to get. First one is called Masterpiece, and what this does, it makes your skills have no cost, the damage dealt is increased by 5%, and the cooldown is decreased by 8%. Next up we got Rage, and what this does is it increases your speed when you deal damage to someone, and the duration scales with your base damage. Next up we got the sharpshooter enchant and this increases your damage by a total of 20% but your cooldowns get 25% longer So I'm not really sure if it's worth it, but in my opinion it is but Overall it totally depends on what type of fighting style you have Next up we got the strong grip enchant What this does is it damage scales with 40% of your melee stats and 60% of your gun and sword stat Next up we got the unbreakable and for this held skills cannot interrupt it Even if you're charging up an ability and someone hits you, you still charge up the ability It doesn't really negate the damage that they do to you, it just stops you from wasting your ability and you can charge it up fully before you slap your opponent with it. Next up we got the Unreal Enchant, and this makes cooldowns 25% shorter, but the damage is decreased by 30%. Kinda worth it in my opinion. Just like before, it depends on your PvP style. Next up we got the Blessing Enchant. The first one is called Burning, and what this does is it applies burn damage for 4 seconds when an attack lands, and the effect scales with the final damage. 
Next up, we got the sea enchant, and this applies sea sickness to fruit users when an attack lands on them. And the effect obviously scales with your base damage. Next up, we got the storm enchant, and this chains lightning damage to people that are nearby you, and when you land an attack on them. And this also scales with your final damage. Next up, we got the frozen enchant, and this applies slowness to your enemy when you attack them. Very solid ability in my opinion. Next up, we got the curse enchant, and the first one is called curse of the thief. This makes enemies always target you and deal extra damage. But the kill rewards like XP, money, and drop rate are increased greatly, and we don't know the percentage yet, but it's really good. Next up, we got curse of the reaper, and for this one, your health regeneration is cut in half, but you heal by 75% of the damage that you do. Kinda worth it, but if it's a prolonged fight, then probably not. 